So yeah, you went on to contest for Mozuchiso Girl in Nigeria. You represented Nigeria abroad. What was that experience like for you? Um, Miss World was fun. It was. Um, it wasn't what I expected or what I had in mind. I what did you have in mind? Slaughterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to D Digest Podcast. I'm your host, Divine Ume, and today I have the amazing, amazing, amazing top model superstar, six six foot three goddess, sitting right beside me. You know, we're so honored to have her here today. So go ahead, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Michelle. MBGN 2017, Miss World Top Model 2017. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so if you guys don't know she contested for most before girl nigeria 2017 which i also contested for and that's how we actually met for those of you who are curious and yes she actually emerged as the winner of miss world 2017 then she went to represent nigeria and also came out in flying colors and was top model 2017 so she has quite a lot of knowledge in terms of the pageantry industry. So do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Has it always been your dream to be like most people go in Nigeria? You just said, let me try this thing out since I'm tall. And then it worked out for you. Um, it was more of a trial thing for me. I, I did not dream of being ambitious or anything. It was... It just happened at that particular time that they were selling the form and I'm like, okay, let me try this thing. It's interesting. And somebody said, ah, you should try it. Let me help you buy your form. And that was it. It's not like I was, there was any premeditated plan to go for it. Okay. So how would you say, what was the experience like for you? Is this something you regret doing or you're like, wow, one of the best experiences of my life? Funny enough, I was uh, thinking about it last night. I was having a conversation with um, a group of friends because they're always like, I want to tease a girl to just call her ABG and she's going to be <laughs> feeling uncomfortable. But um, even though it wasn't part of my plan and I was thinking about it, do I regret it? No. I mean, there are parts of it that I didn't really enjoy, but I was looking back and I'm like, a lot of people that I know that are actually important to me right now or a lot of people that are now family to me, I met them through MBGN, without going through that process, I would never have met these people. And without going through that process, I'm not sure where I would be right now. So if I look back at it, I would say I'm happy that I actually went for it because now I've met some people that are like, I cannot imagine what my life would be like without them. I have grown. I have learned a lot of things. I have been able to discover some things about myself and... I've been able to grow and develop, so I I don't regret it. It just opened um, doors and opened me up to a completely different side of life and a different side of myself. Wow, that's quite quite interesting. That's what I always tell people when people tell me ask me about MBG and I have like similar experiences. Like I had a for me I had a good time because actually the camp was interesting. You yeah, know? camp was fun. Most of the friends that I have still dates, most of them are from MBG and you know, like, amazing people. I mean anytime you get to meet with amazing people, any opportunity to meet with amazing people is always like a good idea. So I always tell people like even if you don't win or even if you win, like the experience is what stands out the most. I mean, even if you win, it's more stress because you travel, you <laughs> buy clothes. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. So I feel like for me, and it was just like the same thing with me. So I was just going for the experience because my sister actually contested the previous year, two years prior. So I was just like, okay, now vibes, let me just go and have fun. <laughs> so I actually just went there, you know, and then getting there, you know, when you're tall growing up in Nigeria or Lagos or wherever, like people just see you tall and they're like, ah, must you forget Nigeria? Yeah, you must contest. So why, are you, not why are you not modeling? Then why are you not playing basketball? Like it's just something that they keep telling you. So so you're like, okay, how much is the form safe? Okay, fine. Let me just buy it and do. So yeah, you went on to contest for Mozuchiso Girl in Nigeria. You represented Nigeria abroad. What was that experience like for you? Um, Miss World was fun. It was, um, it wasn't what I expected or what I had in mind. I what did you have in mind? Slaughterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen uh, Miss Congeniality, that was the picture I had in mind for mm. Miss World. Yeah. But it was nice. It was chilled. I made friends. Unfortunately, I don't really talk to most of them anymore. 
Why? But I don't know. Distance, time zone, oh. language barrier, and all oh, that. Oh. I mean, I still talk to okay, Miss Tanzania and I. We are still friends. But it was fun. It was it was it was an uh, eye opening experience because to be in the same. I thought MBGN was tough being in the commission with like 36 girls yeah there they were like a hundred and something girls so every day i've seen a new person even till the last day of the show i saw someone i was like please who is this <laughs> and then me, i'm like oh wow okay i've never seen this person. so how many how many people contest i think it was so a hundred and four um, or hundred and i think it's hundred and forty then it's hundred and something wow so. that's a lot of girls yeah that's a lot of girls yes and that's to split us up in teams. So you're just used to your team members. Oh. And I was in blue team. So if you're not careful, you can go through that entire one month and not see another person. You just be with your team members and all oh, that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So it was, it was nice. It was like a one month, uh, road trip because we're in a different city every week, a different town, sightseeing, experiencing food, experiencing culture meeting people and for me being very tall in china i was like um, <laughs> what's it called <laughs> uh, what they call this thing like, guys she's six foot three by the way in case you didn't <laughs> in case you missed it you guys think i'm tall wait till you see her like nah. yeah so it was like i was signboard so <laughs> everywhere by, i'm like oh my god so tall picture 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 and then they just take pictures of you they don't even care i don't ask you to take permission they just take pictures of you so it was nice it was nice i enjoyed it so what was the sleeping arrangement like was it like two girls in a room five girls in a room um so it depends on the hotel we we're at at the time so sometimes oh. we are, we're two but you had a permanent roommate throughout the entire trip my oh. roommate was miss rwanda oh wow yeah so we're always in the same room and i think most times we're like two girls in a room yeah some people depends on how the room is so mostly two girls in a room and they shared it alphabetically so okay rwanda okay. was my close to nigeria yes for blue team okay yeah. okay okay um okay so i'm just looking at the pressure like you know especially Nigerians, we take this pageant thing very seriously. And there's a lot of pageant critics that, you know, around and like, okay, Ugochi is going for this Miss World, whatever. Are there people sending you emails, sending you DMs, you know? Do you feel pressured? Like, oh, I was, let me go and make them proud. I don't want to fold your hand. Or were you just like, I beg, I'm going to have fun. Like I always have. Um, so it was different for me. When I was going in for MBG and the, the idea was, let me just go and have fun and just pass. Mm. But then I won, and then I had to go for MBGM Miss World. So the pressure was different. So now it mm. was okay. I have to go for this thing, and I am very competitive, mm. I, which is so. When I tell people that I didn't really put in that much, well, I did actually for MBGM, even though I tried to be as lucky as possible because mm. winning was not part of my plan. Mm. There was a plan for going, and winning wasn't part of it. So I tried to tone down my competitiveness. Yes. So oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, but when I went for Miss World, I was like, okay, I gone. I tried to look for videos online. I didn't see anything. It's mostly Miss Universe videos you see, mm. and then track record. Nigeria hasn't really done anything, so I'm like, okay, this, <laughs> this is my assignment. <laughs> they must notice me. <laughs> Nigeria is not going to leave here empty-handed. This is my assignment. I can't go to this place and just come back and with nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, so I went there and apart, I, I thought I was going to be the tallest because sometimes having mm. that height privilege, so they notice you, but there were girls about my height. Yeah. So the height thing didn't work. So I had to pull out something else. So I had to use my personality. I was the one of the funniest people there. I was weaving people's hair. I was doing my back twerk. <laughs> the, I was, so it was fun. I just made friends and I was lively. I made sure that I was seen. I tried not to hide. Yeah. If there was something I needed to be done, I would put myself in yeah. the front and all that. Yes. I think that's such an amazing strategy. Yeah. It's just make sure you're seen. Make sure you're known. Because you can... I'm saying that there are people there that on the last day of the show, you see some people like, excuse me, who is... What country is mm. this? And it'll be like... So I think it was like that for countries that didn't speak English. Okay. Because they couldn't talk to anybody, especially yeah. countries that had uh, languages that... So it may be... If, it was a country that spoke Spanish. There are other people yeah. that speak Spanish, so you can talk to people like yeah. that. But then there are countries like 
I speak all I those, uh, maybe speak tag those log. Or, uh, yeah, I don't know they speak there, something like that. Maybe oh, I don't yeah. know if they speak their language. Exactly. So you're the only one, you, you can only talk to yourself. Yeah. So, for example, Ethiopia. I remember Miss Ethiopia. She could not say one word of English. <laughs> and I don't know what they speak in Ethiopia. So she she barely Is it, It's not Kiswahili. Is it Kiswahili? I don't know. But she was only speaking to one person. And the person will try to... Translate it. it. Yes. And that kind of conversation can be very laggy. Exactly. So it... Yeah, you could see it was affecting her because mm. she was trying to come in. So, yeah. I mean, it sounds like a very fantastic, lovely experience. So, winning Top Model 2017 Miss World, what was that like for you? Was it like, yes, this is something to go home with or um, there's still one more crown I need to get before I leave? Did you feel disappointed or you were just happy for how far you came? I was disappointed, actually. I was sure I was going to make Top 10. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I understand why I didn't make top 10. Why? Because, so unlike Miss Universe, where everything is on stage, mm. Miss World, there are activities, there is sports challenge, there is head to head challenge, there is the national costume, mm. talent, and there's another one. I didn't know about talent. Mm. Nobody told me anything about talent. But we did talent in MBGN now. Yeah, I did talent in MBGN, but I didn't know we were going to do talent in at Miss World. Miss World. So I found out about it last minute mm. and I wanted to do this. I wanted to do speed painting. Mm. It was on the day I was living and I now saw the paper and they said, you're not allowed to do art or anything. It has to be singing, dancing or, oh. um, yeah, it has to be one of those things, but I can't paint. Mm. So I didn't participate. You didn't participate at all. You should just sang now, even if it's bad, at least if for efforts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't participate in the talent uh, show. Then for national costume, for I thought it was going to be like the Miss Universe one where you have to come with some, something elaborate. Mm. For, but for Miss World, no, you have to dance, be able to dance in your costume. Oh, and wow. they don't care about how elaborate. It's just to show your culture, so mm. show off your country's music mm. and dance. Mm. My costume wasn't showing off any culture. It was coat of arms and mm. you know, I was trying to make yeah, it. Yeah, Nigeria, yes, like Nigeria. Every, everything. So if I had known, I would have maybe picked like Yoruba, Yoruba, or Yoruba and then exactly and done that. But I didn't know that. So is it like a failure on our part? Like the, I'm talking about the pageantry, Nigerian pageantry to educate the Miss World before she goes out? Yes, it's a failure on our part. It's a heavy, heavy a one. A heavy, heavy one because, on I mean, face. how could you miss the core parts? I mean, when you look back and see the why Nigerians have not been winning, won't you go and check, okay, these things, these things, let's make sure that this uh, representative is well-equipped. Someone is informing her, someone yeah. is chaperoning her, telling her what to do. So you're not just there stranded. Because at the end of the day, like, whatever happens at the end of the day, if you win, it's glory to the country. So why would they not make the extra effort to... I think I think part of the problem is also lack of communication between past queens and those that are coming up. Yeah. Because there is this, I don't know if it's, should I say if it's a tendency to think that it's still a competition <laughs> and because, no really, because you've won. So you're like up there, you're not on my level mm. da, 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 and then it's like, this person is coming to steal something from you. Mm. So I think that was one of the major problems. Mm. That lack of communication between past and present. Mm. And that's something that I can proudly say that I tried to break for mm. MBGN. Yeah. So I tried, to, even if they didn't reach out to me, mm. I tried to reach out. And yeah. I tell everybody openly, this is what you should get ready for. This should be your strategy. Mm. For Nyekachi, I remember I was talking to her like almost every day. Mm. I was talking to her sister, do this, do that. Mm. Make sure that all the, uh, what's it called? All the requirements, activities act- all the, yeah challenges that you participate even mm. if you don't win but make sure that you're seen or mm. yes and she did well i think she won for sports she won for um she participated in talent she did a dance and mm. her wig fell off and it made her popular, popular and yes yeah. she did then there's head to head so the only challenge i did was head to head mm. and top model yeah i didn't do the other three. at least she won the top model so thank at least, God. exactly so and i didn't do the other three so i keep thinking about it if i had participated in the other three Probably could have made I could it have to even top five. Way, exactly. Yeah. So I was angry when I stopped at top 15. It was annoying. Mm. I was so pissed. No, but, but, but I think everything happens for a reason. I mean, if you didn't come on here to share us all this inside information, I'm sure a lot of people will go in not even knowing. And maybe they don't have access to you. They wouldn't even know how to come and ask you. Yeah. Or their message might get lost in your inbox. And then they'll just go there unprepared and all of that. So I feel like it's like a blessing and a message to everybody involved in pageantry to kind of just... 
educate whoever you can educate no matter yeah. how any way you can help the community just try and put in a word out there for somebody and then be open to communication if someone reaches out to you to ask you something just provide help in a way that you can and then people asking for help please don't be rude some people just come to your dms and say please send me the requirements <laughs> no hello no you hi say, please. <laughs> there's something to be like hi my name is uh, <laughs> chioma and i am contesting for mbgn 2025 <laughs> i would like you to send me the requirement <laughs> What it's do like, you think I am? Like, you're not even paying on? me for all these things. And what's then, going on? You know, let's just try to be respectful. Don't be rude. I mean, everybody has what they are doing with their time. So try and be respectful with people's time. Yeah? Okay. Any word of advice to, like, upcoming um, girls invo- interested in pageantry? Yes. I, okay. One of the fears people usually have or one of the ideas people have about pageantry is that you have to know somebody mm. or pay somebody. Mm. And People ask me that question a lot, mm. even in my DMs. I'll be like, so um, how much do I need to pay? Who do I need to know? Mm. Who do I need to sleep with? Mm-hmm. And I tell people, the truth is, I don't know anybody. Mm. I didn't pay anybody. I didn't do anything. In fact, I was not interested 100%. And maybe that's why when I won, some people were angry, like, this girl didn't even want it. So why is she the mm. one that? Do you understand? Yes. Mm. So... First of all, I tell people before you go into any of these things, like do your due diligence, research, or ask questions. Mm. Not, how do I explain it? So that you, they, they, are, they have pageants that are actually terrible. Yeah. Where you sell for, um, mm. buy tickets. Pay for your pay crown. Pay for your crown. You pay, pay for, for your, your car. car. Exactly, <laughs> all those things. And it's, I mean, well, go through all that stress when you can actually go for the ones that a reputable pageantry just pay your buy your form. buy your form and you're fine okay so that's the advice for young pageant aspirants um so i'm going to go into now your career what are you currently doing at the moment aside pageantry uh currently i am in school finally went back to school so i am running an mba program with um, lagos business school okay and i'm currently doing my fellowship with Godredge Nigeria. It's a multinational company. And they are the ones in charge of Darling Hair. Okay. So I'm currently doing my fellowship with them, three months fellowship. Okay. So yeah, that's what I'm doing with my life right now. Um, What was that decision like for you? Like switching from pageantry straight to doing your MBA? I mean, for someone who did pageantry, you would expect that you want to stay in the entertainment field, do something in the whole entertainment media space. What was that transition like for you? Um, And why? I have always, I had always wanted to do it. So if I remember then I would, when I was MBGN doing interviews, when they would ask me, so what's next? My answer was always going back to school. So I've always wanted, it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be in the entertainment space. I mean, it would, it would be, would have been nice, but that decision for me wasn't, um, I wasn't hundred percent sure about it, but for, doing my master's that one i was sure so i said okay let's go with this part that we're already sure of and we've already decided that this is something we want to do and then later on and as things unfold later on then we'll decide or i'll decide which path which path to take but it was something i've always wanted to do okay so what has that experience been like for you it's been intense um <laughs> It's not been so. I I didn't. You didn't see. There are some in. days when I'm like, who sent me message? <laughs> Is it by force? <laughs> Why? What was I thinking? Because it was. It's not what I expected. I thought it would be like I knew it would be hard, mm. but I didn't think it would be this hard. It's it's quite intense. I barely have time for anything else like okay so it's time consuming or it's, it's just time consuming difficult. it's intense you have to i mean there are courses that will have you questioning your own intelligence <laughs> like i used i like i used to tell people oh i'm very smart intelligent there are days like i'll sit down in class <laughs> and i'll just be like gucci you don't know buksha <laughs> yeah you, you your brain they used to, to eat gary coconut notes because People will be dropping, according to my classmates, salient points in mm-hmm. class. And you're just lost, <laughs> oblivious. Like, you don't know what's going on. You have to ask somebody, sorry, please don't be angry. <laughs> what's happening? Like, tell me, talk to me, what's going on? Like, oh, my dear. It will help you because it's like they are 
dismantling everything you've known mm. and yeah so it's uh, you question yourself a lot of times mm. there are courses i hope you don't hear me share <laughs> some courses that we did from start to finish i have no idea what we we're talking about no idea how i passed the exam i had i don't know but i sharp passed it sure and that was the end of it so it's for anybody that wants to go into it you have to be ready like, wow be ready put on your iron pants <laughs> Have a Say box of pants. tissue and handkerchief for tears because you will cry. Uh, I've cried though. And oh no sleep. Goodness. Forget about sleeping. Forget that one. You will not sleep. Hang wow. out. That one is down the drain. Forget it. Where are you <laughs> hanging to? The only people, your, are, your classmates are your friends, family, boyfriend, <laughs> girlfriend. They are everything at the moment. Oh my goodness. Your life would literally like circulate around these people. All my hangouts were. Uh, class people and it will be house party mm. and somewhere in the middle someone will just come up with ah have you done fin assignments <laughs> ah excel sheets uh, no literally someone's birthday party we have to bring our laptop and we're doing excel sheets and arranging <laughs> debits and credits and i'm like go is this your life now <laughs> birthday party that people are supposed to be drinking dancing you uh, yeah. dissecting oh my goodness uh, financial statements you guys are the real adults like okay. we were see adults you guys are the real adults like well but it's fun it's also fun yeah. actually as much as they are hard parts it's mm. also fun you get to meet new people mm. like i have a whole new different set of friends, friends yes yeah. and the experience is it's wonderful it just opens you just see that there's your life is bigger than that your tiny bubble that you used to think Thank about you. there's like so much more and so much possibilities that you can so did explore. you ever consider doing your mba outside of nigeria at any point yes i did actually but then covid happened um and i know myself i, I can procrastinate for africa yeah so and I, did, I, I wasn't sure how i was going to go through with the whole registering abroad and all that mm. and i wanted somewhere i could get a scholarship mm. so i was talking to a friend during covid and he was like oh my school because he was he's an alumni he was like oh my school is taking have taken you into i'm like i don't have money he's like hey so you apply for scholarship just make sure you oh. pass the your gmat so if you pass your gmat if you get a certain score mm. yeah you're qualified for to apply for scholarship. Mm. So I did. And I qualified and I got a scholarship. Not everything should pass. Well, that means you are brilliant now. You're now making it seem as if no, life is hard. No, life is not hard <laughs> at that time. And the first... So we have like this introduction uh, period. Mm. So that first one, I was killing it. Yeah. I was sure NHB. Yeah. These are courses that you have to like stand up and be speaking English. Mm. And, da, 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 da. and then the main one happened. We entered financial accounting. <laughs> cost and management accounting. That was where our sister in Christ... Sister Mitchell Gucci <laughs> lost it. Like, I don't know. I don't know why learning is always like that. Like that first introductory part, they make you so sweet, so interesting. I feel like it's a scope to just rope you in, rope you in. Uh, yes, actually. And then by the time you now get set, you're like, what how did I what's going on? Why did like, I not just leave this? in the beginning? How did I get this far? I remember I almost deferred after writing my first proper exam. Mm. I cried for two days. <laughs> I was supposed, I think after my post said black, black, black on my Instagram. <laughs> People were calling me like, Ugochi, what call is your? I'm like, I'm going through depression. At 2 a.m., I was posting chocolates because I was eating. And yeah. I had to call school. I was like, I called him Bafan. Bafan is our course, um, MBA course director. I called her, mm. I said, Bafan, please, what's the process for deferring? She was like, she didn't even ask me, oh, what's happening? She said, mm. eh, okay, I'll send you the meal. She just sent it to me, bruh. Hey, you the want to go, go now? <laughs> you're an adult. <laughs> you made up your mind. <laughs> God. I'm like, yeah. but yeah. After when I look back, I'm like, ah, oh, God, Finn. Mm. Wow. So how long have you been in in, in school now? I started uh, September last year. So it's I'll be done almost, in March. Almost next a year. year. Yeah, oh. it's an eighteen. It's eighteen months. Eighteen months program. Yeah. Wow. See, it will be over before you know it. You My see. Deal. So what's it's... so what's the plan after that? Was was March looking like for you post MBA? I know it's a difficult question. I just had to ask it. <laughs> <laughs> because even if you ask me, I don't know what. <laughs> my dear, oh my, I'm keeping every single option open. If that's something I've learned. Keep mm. all your options open. All my options are open. Japa option is open. <laughs> Nine to five option is open. Yeah. Starting my own business option is open. So I am just dabbling everywhere. Mm. I'm just testing the water so that wherever the wind blows me i will land safely mm. in that in that uh direction yes speaking of starting your own business what do you think would be something you potentially want to delve into 
Um, textiles, actually. Um, when you say textile, is it like selling fabric or like textile design? Textile or? design. Oh, okay. Creating my own fabric, selling. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, they say I have pride, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always wanted to do, like try fashion and design, mm. but everybody's so close in Lagos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so that's I'm fact. not sure how that makes me feel. Mm. So that's why I may, I have not actively pursued it here. This is why mm. I'm, that's why I'm sticking to my textile design, mm. which is something I've always wanted to do. Yes, yeah. but the thing is, okay, after you've designed this fabrics and all that, yeah. do you want to sell? Yes, you can sell. But then I fe- I f- I feel like it would also make sense to start my own clothing line. Well, everybody's so in clothes in Lagos. Everybody's fashion designer. No, <laughs> <There's> yeah, <nothing. laughs> yeah, Philomena. Yeah, Debo is fashion designer. Fashion school, like two so with two sewing machines. Like, fashion, like this is just this is there's weekly, one there's one thing I a s- week. There's one thing I say. I feel like if God called you to do something, or if you have a passion for something, definitely there'll be room for you. Like God will make a room for you. Yeah, I, I even if there's so. twenty people, everybody be like, I want to wear Ogochi's fabric. I want to wear Ogochi's fabric. I've seen people that have triumphed in. I mean, Fisayo Longe. There's so many other people that I know that when they started, everyone was like, "What's person even doing?" Yeah, but to day now they're on Forbes you know they are breaking ground doing things so if it's like really 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 something you're passionate about give it a shot now if it doesn't work you move on now you're a young girl uh, I don't have money to move on <laughs> I don't have that kind of money it's not a business I just move on move on yeah, I don't. so have you always had a thing for art is this something you you want to try out like why are you not painting or doing um, all of that so I studied fine and applied arts Oh, okay. And I would have said something, but they'll go and investigate my results in school. <laughs> the way one anti Christ came out to say is this aggressive approaches that say that <laughs> now they are questioning her entire four years in the school. Anyways, so I studied fine and applied arts in school. Mm. So, yes, the art thing has always been there. Mm. But I have a phobia for colors, or I had uh-uh. the phobia for paints. So, I'm, oh, I don't know, I should call it perfectionism or OCD, but. It has to be perfect. Mm. And with these things, it's never perfect. So I think that's one of my mm. flaws as an artist. And as an artist, you cannot be seeking perfection. That mm. one is, yes. Yeah, because I feel like every mistake is a design. Yes, so, but so. for me, I... So because of that, I never really painted. I never thought about painting. So I majored in textile design. Oh, okay. So lockdown happened. And I was at home. I wasn't doing anything. And I'm like, you know, let's try this. So I started painting. And it's been going well. So I haven't really... I'm still painting on paper. <laughs> <laughs> I just say like I have my own fears like holding me back, but mm. I've started painting and it's something that I want I'm exploring actively. Mm. Even though ever since I started this um program, I, I I've not had time, time for any yeah. other thing, yes. But so it's on hold now. But it's something that I'm definitely, definitely going to mm. Yes, indulge myself in and explore to the fullest. Okay, I think it's always great to look into your passions and see how you can make the best out yeah. of it. Especially something you can do with ease. You don't have to stress. It's always mm-hmm. quite nice. Um, I know you're a cat mom. So you want to tell us about your cats? <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell us about your cats and the very strange names you gave them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, day. Hmm. Today. Mm. So, cats. I had a dog actually, mm-hmm. and I was trying to be like, I got the dog February when this whole lockdown madness started. Mm. That's when I got him, and I named him Denver. <laughs> but our uncle doesn't answer Denver, <laughs> and I had this annoying friend I used to call him Buhari, <laughs> and the dog answers Buhari, so we ended up talking to Bubu. So his name now is Bubu. <laughs> So I had a dog, Boo Boo, Deva. Oh <laughs> <laughs> the third, whatever. Anyway, you want to call him, sure. But uh, my mom took him. Oh. And I just, and I liked having pets around. So I'm like, but I do want to go through the whole dog. Dogs are... A lot uh, of stress. Dog. Dogs are... Is like it expensive having... to have? Pets are expensive generally. Cats are expensive. Dogs are expensive. But dogs are like having a two-year-old baby yeah. in the house. You have to take them out every morning to pee mm. and poo and then bring them inside and then check the time to take them. If mm. they will decide the, decide the house there for you. Mm. But they are sweet because anytime you go out, even if I travel for a we come back and he sees me, he's like, that mm. excitement. Yeah. He wants to be all over you, lick your face, mm. jump on your bed. I'm not really into all those ones. Anyways. <laughs> so my mom has him now. So I'm like, okay, let me try cats. And then 
Uh, there's this guy that I met that he rescues cats and then he gives it up for adoption. Mm. So he doesn't sell. He just gives it to a home, yes. a loving home. So I got my first cat. And then came time to name her. <laughs> and after going through what I went through with Boo Boo, that I gave him one very nice English name <laughs> that was inspired by money heist. And the money went to waste. <laughs> so let me just call this cat something that I can call her easily. So I called, named her Ify. Because I like the name Ify, and it's something that I can just say, Ify, 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 and I won't try to change the name or start calling you Boo Boo or something else. So that's how Ify happened. And then I started going to school, and I felt Ify would be bored and lonely. Mm. Let me get Ify partner in crime. And got another cat. His name is Epa. (laughs) 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 And his name is Epa because he's a tuxedo cat, so he's black. But he has white brows and white whiskers, so he looks like an old man. <laughs> so I named him Epa as Papa Old Man. Yeah, so. Oh but they are God. nice. They're very, even though, ever since I got the second one, it's been weird because they're always fighting. If he doesn't talk to me anymore, she's just, mm. she's we should be hiding and be eyeing me. You went to bring another person to take my place. <laughs> yeah. But cats are actually, I like cats. They are less messy. I just put the litter box and everything with the sand inside. Mm. Go there, do it, cover it up. When we have time, you go and scoop it out. Mm. I think they leaked their, they leaked yourself, right? Yeah, and they leaked themselves, but I still, yeah. Wash because she likes to rub up and cuddle and all of mm. that. Yes, but cats are and they don't bark in the night. Mm. Not, they they'll do. They'll cry when they are hungry. When you put their food for them and they are fine. They will look for one corner to hide. Wow, oh, me, I'm not an animal person. I could never. <laughs> I could never. <laughs> you can start small. Start with a fish. No, I'm not interested. All I have is a plant and I'll just water it and touch it every morning and that's fine. Like, I'm a plant mom and that's okay. Most of my plants are dead, but that's beside the point. (laughs) But I'll rather stick to plants and uh, thank you very much. Hello, can you hear me? Your dear, out there, somebody, please, God, please, thanks, God bless anyone, all of them. I am single to stupid. I am tired. How can I be opening my Instagram and somebody is saying yes? Why can't one person just decide and say no? I want to say no. Everybody's saying yes. They are buying more teasers. They are saying yes. They are, oh my oh God, in all in up and down. Who did, who did they sweat for me? What's going I don't understand. Please, I'm begging. You should come to my rescue. I beg. Guys, the most beautiful girl in Nigeria, 2017. Leave that one outside. You're talking serious matters here. You're talking about It's everything. looking for, <laughs> you have to sell your market now. It's looking for a partner. <laughs> she's looking for a partner so guys if you're out there listening right now and you're like i want to shoot my shots find a way i mean there are different chocolates in the market use one yes you know follow the person or if it's mass buy if it's bounty you know you can even i'll manage sneakers <laughs> anyone okay Thanks. all right okay guys we're moving over to the next segment you know how it goes you guys sent us some of your struggles your questions your dilemmas we're going to take i think two or three depending on how much we can take um, thank you guys so much for sending your questions. As always, you can send your dilemmas, your struggles, your questions to ddigest69 at gmail.com. And we'll be ready to provide solutions and advice to you guys. Thank you. So yeah, I'm going to read out the first email and Uguchi will give us our advice. Hello, Divine. Please keep me as, an- as anonymous as possible. Great work on the podcast. Really enjoyed the last episode with Uche. Thank you. My dilemma is that I think I might be gay. I'm not re- I'm not really sure but I've never been in a relationship with a guy so I can't really tell. I am 26 years old. Started noticing I was into girls when I was in boarding school. Thought it was just a phase that will pass when I when I get into uni, but I did and I found myself still liking girls. Eventually I started dating my female classmates. We were in a relationship up until I graduated 4 years ago and we broke up. I haven't been in any serious relationship since then. I just find men unattractive and the ones I've given a chance have ended up breaking my heart. What do you suggest I do? Do you think I have a problem? How do I move forward with my life? I'm, I'm, I'm not getting any younger. Please, please keep me anonymous. I hope you take my question in the next episode. God bless. Okay, this is a lot. It's quite a lengthy one. But it sounds like this person already has it figured out for herself because I was going to say, oh, try dating a woman to be sure, but she has already done that. But she hasn't dated sure. a guy, so that's why she's not sure. Oh, she's not sure. Mm. But you can't, you already said you hate guys, so I mean. So it could be because she has not tried dating a guy. True. So th- there's also the part of, okay, explore. And then you're in Nigeria, 
there is the, I'm sure there's. I just find men unattractive, and the ones I've given a chance have ended up breaking my heart. Exactly. So, so like she has tried. Actually, yes, yeah. she has. So uh, I, I feel like she has figured it out for herself. You don't like men. You've tried it. It didn't work out, and you feel women, women are the way for you. Well, first and foremost, my dear, please go and write IELTS. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And explore your and live your life to the fullest because it seems like I cannot tell you try men, give men a try again. Mm. Because this, whether we like it or not, it's the environment where and this is Nigeria. Yeah. No. As much as we like to form, we are woke, we are open minded, we are not. You're going to be judged, and I'm not sure you are ready to go through that experience. So my advice would be. Write IELTS and apply for WES and move to Canada. And then there you can fully explore. You can even have a girlfriend. You can have a child and have all of that. But also keep your options open. That's something that I've learned that is very important. Be open. Just be open to... You never know. Be open to changes. Be open to opportunities. Be open to love. And then be sure, like, what is, what exactly is it for you in these relationships? Is it the sex? Is it, do you need attention? Is it the way ladies give you attention that you like? Or is it the way they are loving you? Is it? Well, she goes for therapy. Sexual, exactly. So figuring it out, that's therapy, yes. So you have to actually figure it out, basically, like, what part of it? Is it because this is just who I am or because, I, I am seeking love in a particular way or seeking attention in a particular way that only women tend to understand. Mm. And if it's that, then you can say, okay, maybe is there a guy that can give it to me? Because it seems like you're actually open to dating guys because from what you said here, you've dated a couple of people mm. that they broke your heart. So mm. then communication comes in. So it's a lot of, you have a lot of options actually. So just play with it. Play around it. Try therapy. Think about it. Sit down. Write down your why. Why am I doing this? What is the reason behind this? Am I sure this is what I want to do? And then, yeah. Yeah, I think she gave really great advice. So this second question says, Hi, Divine. Thank you so much for taking my question in the last episode. So I finally decided to stay at my job and wait it out till I have a backup plan. Thank you so much, Uche. Her story is really inspiring. Oh, okay, okay. I remember this was one of the questions we took last week. So yeah, I'm glad you stayed at your job. I mean, things will work out eventually. Uche, they are thanking you. Uche is currently in the UK right now. So shout out to Uche. Hope you're having fun. Um, One more question. This one says, hi, Divine. Great job on the podcast. Thank you very much. My name is Anna from China. Yeah? China? Hmm. Wow, that is, that's mad. Shout out to you. Ni hao. If you guys didn't know, I used to speak Chinese. I used to speak Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I speak Chinese, actually. I just don't know if I still remember. But yeah, I haven't been practicing, but I do know how to speak Chinese. I recently just stumbled on your podcast and I can't stop listening to it. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Oh, thank you for listening. So I'm 17 years old and my parents won't let me have a boyfriend till I'm 21. I don't think this is fair. I have tried to make them see reasons with me, but my father has threatened to throw me out of his house. I currently just met this guy at my school and I like him a lot. We've been seeing each other behind my parents' back and he even told me I can move in with him if my father eventually finds out and throws me out of his house. I'm seriously considering this because I like him a lot. What do you advise I do? Thank you. She's how old again? So she's 17, but her parents are not letting her date till 21. But she has met this guy and they are seeing each other behind their parents' back and the guy is saying that even if her father threatens to throw her out. He's ready to accommodate her. Okay, first of all, I'm curious to know how old this guy is. And if he's older, he is a pervert that should be <laughs> tied by his legs and dragged behind a horse <laughs> down third concrete Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying you didn't have a boyfriend at 17? I said if he's old. Oh, okay, okay, if okay. He's an, as I said, I was curious to know, if he's an older guy, he deserves to die painfully, slowly, and miserably. I'm sorry, I know you think you love him, but that's just the truth. I've been where you are. Trust me, it's not worth it. You just end up going through a lot, much less in mm. life. Anyways, for this one, I am strongly behind your parents. At <laughs> 17, you should not... Honest, no, I'm serious. I know then your hormones are everywhere and you think you're in love, but my sweet, sweet darling Anna, you are not in love. You are in hormones. <laughs> you're in your ovaries and your fallopian tubes and you are dancing and making you think that you're... <laughs> You know what you're doing, but you don't know what you're doing. Honestly, I am 25 and I have no idea what I'm still doing. You do not need a boyfriend at 17. You should be putting your life together. I mean, people are 
making Forbes 20 out of 20 list. You should not be thinking about making a man's knack list. I'm sorry. <laughs> You will think, and I'm serious. So I'm not trying to be judgmental or anything, but it, these are the facts of life, right? I'm a young girl. I'm going to be 25. Divine is also quite young. And let's, we are now, we're talking to you as sisters. Yeah. Men has come. Yeah. Women has come to, but men, men are has come. Has come. <laughs> Do you understand? And it's always going to be, that selfish interest is always going to be there. And if you go down this path, you will come out with a lot more baggage and mm. hurt than he will. Because if anything happens, you, you will probably get pregnant. Mm -hmm. That's on your body. You, and then you probably have to take it out, your body as well. Mm. And when this happens, he's going to leave you to, move, to go and meet fresher meat. Mm. And it's a man's world. Because I was thinking about it yesterday. Mm. Now, men of 40-something mm. are dating girls that are in their 20s. Mm. And these girls are in their 20s. These men are age mates with their mother. So probably my mom, her, one guy was toasting my mom when they were in secondary school. And now the guy is coming to date me. Mm. And it's normal. But my mom can't, because he, he can't look at my mom because now my mom looks older. Mm, yeah. So it's a man's world, my dear. And so you have to protect yourself yeah. at all times. And you shouldn't be going behind. I don't know, maybe your parents are people that you can't talk to. Then find someone else that is, um, what's the word, that is only, that is, that doesn't have any interest. Mm. Someone that is neutral. Not with, yeah, neutral without any bias. And talk to the person about this. Maybe if your parents are people that you can't really talk to. But I know Asian people always say their parents are strict. Yes, like, but or keep a diary or keep talking to Divine through this podcast. But honestly, I do not think you need a boyfriend. And any guy that wants to take you out of your parents' house mm. at 17 That's a red flag. does not have your best interests at heart. No part. home I'm training, sorry. no respect. Even him, he might think he does, but he doesn't. He's just being selfish. Mm. And my darling, when you move in with him, you're going to be miserable. He'll Housemate. probably start beating you because to him, you're always <laughs> going to be a child. No, because you're a child. And men are very, what's the word, age conscious. Mm. And when they feel like they have this age thing over you or they feel like they have this power over you, they're going to want to use it and utilize it. And then he's going to realize that you're holding him back. You're pulling him back from his opportunities because now he has to take care of you and take mm. care of himself. And they become a burden. Mm. And then he's probably going to throw you out and then you can't go back to your parents. You can't go back to him. So please focus on school. Focus on building yourself. Focus on... And then, you know what? I guess what, I gave one girl an advice that said she couldn't wait to leave her parents' house. Mm. And she had the opportunity to write an essay and win, but she didn't do it to get back at her parents. I'm like, don't you think that's stupid? You can have written that essay Made that money so that when you're 18, you can use your money and leave your Go. parents' house. Like, how so, will you not save up? Can have a plan for moving. Exactly. So, my advice to you is at 17 now, you should be trying to work on it or develop yourself so that at 20, if you mm. and this guy are still in love, you can comfortably move out of your parents' house your and not have to depend on your parents. So, even yeah. if they decide to disown you, you're older, you're older, you're old enough to take care of yourself mm. and take care of him. So, we're not taking care of any man in here, please. Well, my dear, at this <laughs> point, we don't know, but. <laughs> Let's just hold it like that. <laughs> you understand? Uh -huh. So take care of him. In case baby comes, take care of your baby. Not the when he tell when, when baby is crying, you don't tell him, baby, ah, our mm. baby is sick. Mm. Baby, you know I love you. Mm. Baby, is we are love? hungry. Baby, you know I love you. You will not eat love, my dear. Love will not give, buy you drugs. It At will not all. buy you baby food is it expensive. It will not buy you Gucci or whatever or whatever. It won't buy you all those fine lovely things that you like. So baby girl, please calm down. Take your time. Read your book. Write what I like. I don't know if you write in China, but write it and develop your mind, develop yourself and be the best you can be. You do not yeah. need a man right now. That's the last thing you need. Yeah, I think that's actually amazing advice, um, especially in this TikTok era now where they're glamorizing all these young marriages and people that, are, you know, whenever you're ready, they'll put all this song in the background and you feel like, oh, this is what having it easy. If those people sit down with you and tell you what it was like having those teenage pregnancies or starting those teenage relationships, you'll be like, nah, I'll pass, okay? So I feel like maybe this era of TikTok now, you are feeding yourself with a lot of fairy tale love stories and you feel like that's how it's going to be take it from 20 year 20 year olds that have passed through that stage it's not worth it and any guy that is serious about you will not have a problem speaking to your parents if exactly. he was really serious about having a relationship with you nothing stops him from coming to that your strict dad because your strict dad will not kill him exactly. he will not shoot him gone so if he was serious he'll come and say good afternoon sir i really like your daughter this is my name this is my address this is my parents get to know who i am but for the moment he tells you, um, even if your dad throws you, I'll come to my house and stay there. It already shows it's irresponsible. I can't see anything positive coming out of that experience. Maybe one out of ten. 
Okay, so it's left. And to- then it depends on what you're doing, right? As I said, like develop yourself. So if you, even if you want to move in with him at 18, that's fine. Mm. So when we are at Miss World, one of the contestants was 17. Mm. And she's already living, living with her boyfriend. Mm. So she's trying to actually make a way for herself. herself. So you cannot be dependent on somebody mm. and be moving in with him. She has gone and collected for her country's own. She has won. She's at Miss World. Mm. She's trying to she's in school the she's, courage to even take on such yes, a task to I mean, do all of that and yeah. her parents are, are seeing that okay these two young people are actually working hard towards something and mm. then they're willing to support mm. so you have to have a foundation that your parents are going to support you guys on mm. so build work on something for yourself focus take the time to actually build yourself so mm. that when you decide to take some decisions people will take you seriously Respect and you. understand that okay you are you probably are mature enough to make yes, decisions for exactly. yourself. Yes, exactly. So yeah, that's really about the question segment. So you guys know the last segment is basically say one thing you're loving, one thing you're hating, one thing you're recommending, and finally, word of advice. So I'm going to start. What am I currently loving? Hmm. I just got this new Vranges, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Dr. Vranges Diffuser. I got it mm-hmm. yesterday and it smells really nice and it just smells really expensive. Um, I used to have it before, but then I ran out of it. And I couldn't find it in supermarkets. I found it yesterday and I bought it. And yeah, that's what I'm currently loving. It just smells so nice. What are you currently loving? What am I currently loving? Ekba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. I'm currently loving my new job oh, at yeah. my yeah my fellowship uh, thingy. I'm currently loving it. It's um it's challenging. It's tough. It's in the car. Just I have to drive every morning, but we're pushing it, and I'm enjoying it. So yes, that's what I'm currently loving. So is it like a nine to five thing? Yeah, nine to five. Wow. Oh, that that's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Oh, that's really really nice. So what are you currently hating? I am currently hating excuses for men. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, because I'm I'm finally learning something. So I've. That's why it's it's better to do all these things when you're old and you're able to like think for yourself mm. and decipher and decide, okay, this is what I want, this is what I don't want. Mm. So I have said coming into this space of loving myself and appreciating myself and understanding what I deserve mm. and how I deserve it. Yeah. And understanding so all this talk of what you bring to the table. I have finally come to a space <laughs> where I understand what I bring to the table. Mm. And because I understand this, I am not willing to take Mm. less or take L- excuses effort. from the opposite sex yeah. so currently because i understand that i am hating it before i used to take all the excuses and try to make it better and all of, all of that, 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 that nonsense mm. but now i've come to a space where i'm like see if you cannot give me what i deserve yeah use that door that one just <laughs> bang it out lock it later just go from there yeah yeah wow that's that's quite interesting wow what am I hating right now? Um, I'm actually not hating anything recently. Well, I think I'm hating my camera right now. The battery yeah. is not lasting for, I don't want to curse, but the battery is not lasting at all. I mean, it has gone off like three times since we were recording. We just had to keep recording without it. Um, the focus is no longer focusing. So I don't know what is really going on there. But yeah, that's currently what I'm hating right now. I'm sure I'll, I'll be able to sort it out later on, but I'm just so bummed that I'm not filming. I'm not recording right now, but it's all good. It's great. Finally, word of advice. What is your word of advice for anybody who is listening right now? Word of advice is, if you're in Nigeria, please go for therapy. (laughs) Not necessarily therapy. So therapy doesn't necessarily have to be, you register with a doctor and sit down and Mm. da 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 da. So for example, me, I started taking swimming classes Mm. and it was therapy for me. And then I started learning how to, I'm learning how to ride bicycle. Mm. So if you're in Lagos, if you're in Nigeria, you're in Lagos, please mm. just find some or find someone to be talking to because to a lot is going on. Yeah. Enters, Buhari, Nandekanu, IPOB, mm. and it's a lot. So find somewhere to release all the steam from. Then word of advice for everybody is to actually calm down and learn about yourself. I know we all like we Everybody likes to say, oh, I know myself, I know myself. But the question is, do you actually really know yourself? Mm. So take the time, calm down, understand yourself, understand your your thought process, understand so that... And then 
that's the only way you can actually genuinely and easily learn to love yourself. I know everybody keeps saying, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Mm. But it's not as easy as it, as, you, as, as it sounds. It's, it's a whole process because we are human beings and mm. as human beings, we tend to always keep finding faults. And one of your biggest criticizers is yourself. Mm. So standing in the mirror, oh, this pimple is looking like this. My mm. stomach is big. My bum <laughs> is that. And all of that. So you're, you're your own biggest hater. Yeah, that's that's just how it is. It's yeah. not a thing. It's not. I'm not trying to be deep, but we are our own biggest haters mm. because someone is seeing and you look perfect, but then you go in the mirror and then you've seen all the imperfections mm. that are not even there. Mm. So you need to actually sit down and understand yourself, mm. and then when you fully understand yourself, then you can mm. now start the process of loving yourself genuinely. Mm. And only when you've learned to love yourself genuinely that you can now understand how people should love you. Mm. Or how you want people to love you. Mm. If not, you'll just be everywhere like me before when I was in the world. But now I'm out of the world. You'll just be everywhere <laughs> taking nonsense from every Tom, Dick and Harry. Not just relationship-wise, even friendship-wise. Mm. I'm not trying to... It's not a man woman matter. This is yeah. both friendships and all that. Even family. And even family, life. yes. Yeah. So then you're, be- you're able to understand, okay, what you can tolerate, what you can't tolerate, what you can take. So that not everything then gets to you because this world we're in, it's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's pressure from social media and all of that. So if you don't... Check in with yourself like yes, every now and you will then. lose it yeah, at true. some point. So It's true. I strongly agree. That was very profound. Um, I would say based on today's episode is enjoy every experience in your life. Like yeah. every stage you are at in your life, whether that be MBGN, whether that be MBA, whether that be um, YouTube or podcasting, anything. Because like life is so, I don't know the word to use right now, but life is so, I don't know how to put it, maybe unsetting. Um, you don't know when is the last day you're doing something. You don't know when you're opening a new chapter to another thing. So, and it's like, just enjoy that moment you're in. Um, be open to anything. Be open to any opportunity. Try something out. Like, that's why I always tell people, like, if you have a passion for something, I'm strongest advocate for try something out. Like, mm-hmm. even with this, my podcast thing is like, I've always wanted to do it. And it was 2020 came with COVID. And I was like, okay, everybody has an excuse to be unproductive. And then 2021 came, there was no excuse again that was ever seen. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just do it. The worst that will happen is what you will feel. Okay, good and fine. Do another thing then, you know? I mean, I know people always say there's no money, but the same way the first money came, second one is going to come. So it's like, just try, be open to things, try out things and enjoy every experience wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, just enjoy the experience. And of course, put in your best, put in your best. You know, I can tell how far to take you or where to take you. So yeah, that is my word of advice. I think it's a lot of advice, but I'm sure you guys get the point. Yeah. And yeah, that is the end of this podcast episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to have Ugochi here or Michelle. I don't know which one you guys want to call her. We called her a lot of things in this episode. <laughs> I'm so excited to have her here. You guys, make sure you check out her social media platforms. I mean, plug yourself. Tell them where they should follow you. So follow should... me on Instagram at Mitchell, M-I-T-C-H-E-L underscore Ihezue, I-H-E-Z-U-E. Okay. That's the only social media I'm on. Do you have anything against social media? Why are we just really on Instagram? What happened to Facebook, Twitter? Oh, I'm on Facebook, but um, I don't know. You're not using my family it. people. And Twitter, I don't have VPN. Oh, yeah. Twitter, Twitter is, banned is banned in, in Nigeria. Nigeria so, yeah. <laughs> a lot of things are banned in Nigeria. Like, if you see any Nigerian around, just give them a hug. Just hug them. <laughs> they say, go to therapy. You need it. <laughs> We're going through a lot in this country. Which I mean, uh, I can't even start going into the walls. Yesterday, I went to the market. I know what I saw there. Like, I literally know what I saw in the market. The prices are ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, Everything is 10 times 10 the, price, times the no. price. And nobody's talking about it. That's the funny thing. We just come online and we're all laughing as if it's funny. Nothing is funny. We're suffering. Okay. And I'm going to say we're suffering. <laughs> but anyways, that's besides the point. So follow her on Instagram at Michelle Ihezwe. And um, yeah, follow me as always as on, on Instagram, YouTube, um, everywhere you can find me. My information will be in the description box. So do make sure to check that out. Don't forget to send us your questions, dilemma, struggles to our email address at ddigest69 at gmail.com. And we'll see you guys in our next episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like this podcast, rate this podcast, leave us a review so we know that we're doing something right or wrong. Okay. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>